when is a handshake more than just a handshake? When it's there to signify an allegiance to a secret society. When it's there as a symbol to let other members know that you're with them. All through the ages, secret societies have used secret gestures and signs to allow themselves to know one another. To let you know just who's in this pack. So when is a wave more than just a wave? When it's meant to signify something to those in the know. Those who belong to the secret societies. Now most of you think these are guys that just dress up in silly outfits and ride around in little scooters. They may seem innocuous enough. But Tex Mars has compiled all the information to let us know the secret hidden codes of the Illuminati and to show us that it's not all fun and games. Well, welcome, Tex. Well, thank you very much, uh, Freeman. It's great to be with you. It is great to have you. And I know you're having a great impact in this area. In fact, uh, on the Internet and so forth, all throughout America, people are beginning to talk about the Freeman perspective, so I'm glad to be here. Well, thank you. Thank you. Well, if, if a picture's worth a thousand words, a thousand pictures is worth what? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, uh, a, a magnitude. And uh, I do have over a thousand pictures in my new book, Codex Magica. Uh, many of them are incredible pictures from uh, ancient uh, uh, manuals and textbooks of the occult going all the way back to pagan mystery Babylon. But of course, we have the incredible numbers of politicians, financiers, bankers, uh, entertainers, probably the elite of this world who we have well, let's just face it, Freeman. We have caught them in an, what is basically an occult ritual, and it's sort of a we're in your face type of thing. Absolutely. They are, they are taunting the American public and saying we can carry on occult rituals right before your eyes, and they're saying you, the public, are so stupid and so ignorant you won't even know what we're doing. And that's why I'm glad we're going to inform some people and they're going to discover what is going on before their very eyes and uh, we're going to expose uh, what, let's just put it in an old Texas term these rascals yes, uh, so absolutely. well I've gathered together a few hundred images here to uh, for us to look at and talk well, about great and, great um, I opened it here with them giving a sign and uh, the salute because you opened your book with the uh, the salute in your military career well, Freeman, you know, there's certainly nothing wrong with a military salute, and as an Air Force officer myself, I, uh, thousands of times I saluted, and it's a sign of a, a greeting, it's a sign of, well, it's in a sense, it's a sign of superiority officer over uh, enlisted, too, uh, and, of, and of camaraderie. Uh, but I also noticed this, that there are many people who make the salute in a different way. You know, some very crisp and military-oriented, and some sort of lackadaisical. But you know when a salute is a salute, regardless of, you know, this or that or, you know, the, the, the various forms of it. And so in this book, I tried not to be dogmatic. I understand that in the process of talking and interacting in daily life, that our hands may end up in funny places. And so I, I don't want to stretch effects. But what we're going to see, I know, in this series of slides and images, we're going to see hand signs quite often that are that are improbable. They're not by accident. They're they're designed on purpose. They are a form of occultic or satanic art. And uh, you know, it's interesting, Marshall McLuhan uh, the, the famous Canadian who wrote about the media and how the media was, was able to brainwash people. He said something I thought was interesting. In one sentence he stated, the police state is now a work of art. Absolutely. And, and I think that's, that's a fascinating thing. Are we going into a police state? 
and you're you're showing some things here the Nazis and and others we see various hand salutes there's Arnold Schwarzenegger surely he's not giving the Nazi salute is he Freeman oh, yeah, <laughs> he loves the Nazis and his father was SS uh, and he, yes. he wants to be dictator of the world uh, he did really, say it the only difference that I see between Hitler giving his salute and Ashcroft and, and Bush and Billy Graham mm -hmm. uh, is that they're smiling well, yeah, and, and, and smile they should. After all, uh, look at the success uh, that they're able to. Uh, you take uh, uh, Graham, of course. In 1966, he was at the House of the Temple for the 33rd degree initiation ceremony. Uh, and this was reported to me by uh, Jim Shaw, who uh, went on to renounce Freemasonry. He was initiated as a 33rd degree Mason. So Billy Graham is a high-level member of a secret society. This is how Billy Graham became famous. This is, uh, they make these people through PR. Uh, they, they own the media and they're able to create manufacturer personalities. They, absolutely. <laughs> I see this and I see it over and over again and we're going to cover so many of these people to see how they create these uh, type of mindsets. Mm -hmm. That's really what it is. It's a mindset that people are being placed into. And so now we're seeing open Satanism around us all over the place. That's what it is. It, it, it is a form of, of Satanism. Now remember, people in many of the secret... Well, there's an example right there. Pat Robertson, you see that is a very uh, irregular. People don't pose for a picture with their hand looking like a claw. Right. And of course this has to do with the uh, one of the Masonic uh, uh, signs in which he's basically saying that if I divulge the secrets of the order, may my breast be torn out and put on top of a steeple and the vultures tear at it and all so he's taking a he has taken a hideous just grotesque oath uh, in his Freemasonry uh, and so this is the sign now interesting that very photo was placed on the cover of Time magazine when Pat Robertson of the 700 Club ran for President of the United States. Wow. As a sign to all those out there, we're, you know, I'm one of you, and ha, 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 aren't we putting one over on the public? But you can see we'll go to the, next the, the look on his face, and you see the claw. I call it the claw. But actually, it's the, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, uh, fellowship, or the uh, fellow craft degree of Freemasonry. Yeah, there it is. This is from an old Masonic manual, uh, Freeman, as you can see, the drawing. Uh, in the book, we use uh, Richardson's Monitor of Freemasonry, uh, Mackey's Encyclopedia of Freemasonry, so many other, t many textbooks right from secret societies, Rosicrucian manuals, right. uh, the Order, the OTO, mm -hmm. so many of the occult secret societies, we use their own drawings and manuals, so you can't deny that Pat Robertson is giving that sign, it's right out of one of the secret society manuals, he is a member of that member. secret society. What about Joseph Smith? Uh, he was also a Freemason. Yeah, Joseph Smith, of course, was founder of the Mormon Church. Uh, he was an occultist. Uh, and you, you see some of the members of the Mormon Church with their little Masonic-like aprons on uh, in their various uh, ceremonies. And they're giving the same uh, hand signals and body uh, gestures as you will find in the various Masonic uh, order uh, orders because... Joseph Smith and the boys were all Masons. If you go back in history and you, you research the first Masonic temple, for example in uh, Novo, Illinois, you, you'll see all kind of Masonic sun signs, moon signs, because okay, they worship these various astrological deities. Uh, and this was the early Mormon church. And of course much of it is now hidden underground right. by the LDS or Mormon church. But we did see some of the, the exact uh, hand signals of the Mormons. And now each of these signs are a penal sign uh, discussing that they you know, will cut their th own throat, rip out their tongue, or cut out their bowels and hang it in the... <laughs> exactly. And Everything you said is, is absolutely true. Uh, and uh, you, know, uh, you know, now I'm a Christian and the Bible says that we're not to take oaths. Right. Especially these hideous oaths. Uh, and, and of course it's interesting, all of the disciples and Jesus himself said that they did nothing in secret.
Right. Everything they did was in the open. We as Americans should demand this of our leaders, that they do nothing in secret. Everything should be in the open in, in a free and, and democratic uh, uh, country. Absolutely. But we're dealing with an order of death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We 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 see this. This is probably a uh, in Germany the death's head uh, core of the Gestapo and, and and so forth. And of course, the death's head has been barred by the Order of Skull and Bones as one of their symbols, as you know. Uh, with uh, John Kerry being a member, right. Senator John Kerry and. George W. Bush and his father as well. So here we have an occult brotherhood of death right here in America at uh, Yale University. Fifteen young men, only the elite. I mean, if you or I went to Yale University, even if we could afford to get in and we had the influence to get in, uh, we're not going to be able to join. We're not going to be tapped, as they call it, for the Order of Skull and Bones and live in the tomb next to a cemetery. That's where they live. They live adjacent to a cemetery for their uh, senior year and they're sort of outfitted and prepared for the world and then they become the high level executives and that's why George W. Bush when he ran for governor of the state of Texas he had no opposition no. the minute he chose to run the, the Bush dynasty went uh, into operation and all the other people said we don't want any, any part of that we don't want to make the Bush dynasty mad at us so these people have favored lives you see and knowing this crew, I, I really believe that H.W. would have uh, used some ritual and also psychological warfare on his own child to bring him up in a, in a particular... Oh, absolutely. I, I'm sure of that. Many of these people have all kinds of rituals and requirements. Uh, I believe that many of them in their, their mansions, and I have proof of this, have various satanic idols and even altars set up with black candles mm -hmm. and worship Baphomet and other uh, false gods. Well, and and, and it's so incredible because uh, we see them, uh, you know, Bill Clinton, he takes his Bible in hand, he walks over to a Methodist church yeah. down the street from the White House when he was in office on Easter. Sunday, right after, of course, he had sex with Monica Lewinsky in the Oval Office, he goes to, uh, to church. But it, but in fact, these people are members of the Bohemian Grove, the Order of Skull and Bones, and uh, they do various hand signs, have various rituals, and they're not at all Christians. Not, a, not at all. I'm close. See, I found this picture of, of Jesus giving a hand sign. Uh, there was uh, an article about Jesus being a Freemason. and they, Oh, is that right? <laughs> but we know, of course, that the Templars and the Masons have a large deal to do with building cathedrals. They, they do, you because the there's such a thing as occult or sacred architecture. Yes. And I noticed on the intro to this program a tremendous job you did showing some of the buildings even in downtown Austin with, well, uh, yeah, with some various uh, messages embedded in the very architecture. Yes. Uh, of these buildings. So as you, it, it's interesting, you know, if Satan is prince of the power of the air, a demon, if you will, a devil, then is he not flying in the skies above sometime looking down and saying, isn't it wonderful? The world is patterned after my design. And the, the Masons, of, of, uh, of course, call themselves, uh, they say they worship the grand architect right. of the universe. Yeah, here's the Pope. Uh, notice the Pope John Paul II, for even behind him is an upside-down cross. Yes. Well, isn't that what Anton LaVey and the Church of Satan had? Yes. Upside-down crosses. Is that not a symbol? That's not a mistake. Uh, he has cardinals. He has advanced men. He has front men. They arrange the altars and the thrones and all these things. So so he doesn't just go in there and they've made a mistake and, and they put the cross upside down by accident, you see. No. <laughs> well, that takes us to their God. You know, they, they are finally informed later on. Uh, well, here we have the secret hand sign of John Oh, Long. yes. Now, that's an interesting one. You know, remember Napoleon? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you have a picture Napoleon, of old Napoleon. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah it's, it's interesting. You know, you put your hand like this. There's George Washington. Uh, George, un uh, regrettably, George Washington was a member of this group. Uh, and, uh, you know, I used to see Napoleon giving this sign, and I said, well, maybe his, there he is. And you see that in all the famous paintings of Napoleon, and Freeman, as a young boy, I said, well, maybe his hand was cold. Yeah. You know, he's, he's trying to, you know, <laughs> you know he should have had a better jacket than that. Look, look, it's it's too too small for him. <laughs> but, uh, in fact, of course, this is a Freemasonic sign. It's the, uh, I call it the hidden hand of the god Jabulon. Jabulon. And that's the that is the the Masonic god. And it's a combined god of Jehovah and Baal, 
who is the devil in the Bible, and On, another name for the Egyptian sun god. And so they had this unholy witch's brew combination, and higher level masons are told this is the god you worship. Jabulon. Jabulon. Oh, there, there is one of the Masonic symbols. And as you can see, you have a triangle, the unholy trinity uh, of, the, of the devil. And you have the eternal circle, the uh, satanic boast that he will reign forever. Uh, and there you have Jah, meaning Jehovah. Mm. But in, a, in an unholy mixture, he's mixed with the the bull, you might say, or Baal. And the Bible mentions that Baal is in, indeed a fire, the, one of the ancient Canaanite fire gods, which is the devil. And then you have On, uh, or On, which is the name of a city in Egypt wherein they worshipped the great sun god. And of course, his eye, his all-seeing eye, is on our dollar bill. Yes. So how did that get there? Well, there's you know another story yeah. behind that. Well, we're going to get to all of that. <laughs> this is the this is the Tau sign. Go to the next shot there. And uh, here again we have this is the highest sign of Royal Arch uh, Freemasonry. Well, now there we have something that would appear to be from the Bible because the Old Testament talks about the serpent being put up on a cross and anyone who looked upon it was healed. But of course in the occult then they make the serpent to be holy. Yes, they do. They're in their own works. In, in their own works. And that's why the cover of my book Codex Magica has this Ouroboros serpent swallowing his own tail, which maybe we can talk about. Yeah. Hey, here we, now here you've got an image of Aleister Crowley, uh, the great, uh, I call him great, he was really infamous, right. a British Satanist. And you know, L. Ron Hubbard went and studied under uh, this British Satanist and founded uh, Scientology. But here, look at the symbols of his hands and the the the. the, the the, the, the sun, radiant sun with a triangle uh, on the headgear uh, and uh, absolutely a Satanist. He would carve satanic images in the breast and the chest area of, the, of, his, of his women. He had a harem. And of course he was also a bisexual so he had male uh, males who he had sexual rituals with uh, as well. Uh, these are all uh, hideous uh, emblems uh, that bring in the, the male phallic symbol and all kinds of things. They seem to worship that a lot. Well, they do. Basically, all of these cults are sex cults. Because the mystery religions, they go back to the mystery religions, uh, and they're related to that, and they're all sex cults. They had the goddess, remember they had the holy prostitutes in the temple, and all of these are throwbacks to those kinds of things. What we're seeing there underneath the Jabulan uh, symbol, underneath is a three by three uh, ceremony in one of the Masonic uh, rituals and, and basically they do their hands and legs in such a way that literally it forms 666 when you when you get to various numerological configurations. I found a lot of 666's and this leads us to Albert Pike here. Uh, yeah, a little bust of uh, Albert Pike. If you go visit the House of the Temple, and they do have uh, tours in Washington, D.C. I've, I've, I've been there. Oh, have you been there? Okay, I've never, I've never been there. I have many pictures of it. And uh, it's exactly 13 blocks from the White House. Uh, Albert Pike was a Confederate war general. Now, in Texas... The NAACP and other agencies are demanding that we take down any monuments or statues having anything to do with the Confederacy. You know, if your school is named Robert E. Lee High School, change it. We want no vestiges of the old Confederacy. But isn't it interesting that Jesse Jackson, who's a 33rd degree Mason, Colin Powell, who's a 33rd degree Mason, have no problem with this man we saw, not this picture, but the one before, the, the bust of Albert Pike who was a Confederate war general, who was wanted as a war criminal by Abraham Lincoln. And uh, his statue today sits in front of the Justice Department in Washington, D.C. on public land taken care of by the U.S. Pork Service. Right. And he was, he's a 33rd degree mason, a Confederate war general, a war criminal. And a capitalist. <laughs> exactly. And so, uh, but it's amazing. His tomb 
and meaning his body uh, is interred, the bones, inside the house of the temple. Yes. The international headquarters of Scottish Rite Freemasonry when in I was Washington, D.C. She told me, she says, now this place is haunted. Oh, it's haunted. And I said, I'm not surprised. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> they took me around and they brought me to the Albert Pike room. Oh, uh huh. Now they had told me, you're not allowed to be alone anywhere, right? Well, hmm. she left us alone there. And uh, she's like, I'll be right back. Who's your grandfather? And she went and got my grandfather's membership card and then gave me a copy of Morals and Dogma and the glossary to Morals and Dogma. Well, I'll be. And, you know, they found out that my family were all related. Yeah, and, and they thought you, well, this guy could be one of us. You had to go back to it real quick. Uh, yeah, you had a picture of Karl Marx. And I want to talk a little about the beard, you know. We've got uh, Albert Pike and the beard. Oh, yes. Now we got Karl Marx doing the whole secret sign of the, the, the beard of course you know many bearded men out there will get angry at us and I don't mean to to uh, cast any uh, aspersions on bearded men but it is true that back uh, in the 1800s a satanic sect began and uh, one of the signs of it was uh, heavy beards like this uh, it was uh, often called the League of Just Men uh -huh. but of course they were not just at all they were evil Satan worshippers and Karl Marx was indeed a satanic priest now you see him here with his right hand in the coat. He is giving the hidden hand of the sign of Jabulon. Yeah. So that shows that he knew that the false god he worshipped was not God at all. He was Jewish, of course. His father, uh, his grandfather, had been a Jewish rabbi, but he renounced even that faith uh, and then became a Satanist. And in one of his early, he also tried to become a poet, but he wasn't very successful. But in Olana, one of his early poems, uh, he said, his real goal was to destroy the whole world. These people are destroy the whole world. Yeah, they do. In these pictures, now they're set up as portraits. I mean, these are pictures that they intend to be shown and, and represent uh, them. You're right. You're right. That was like a, an official portrait yeah. of Karl Marx. He, he. But you know, isn't it interesting if you ask ten people on the street that you choose. What does that hand sign signify oh, there in the coat? No. no, they wouldn't know. So, again, they believe that they are, uh, they get some kind of a satanic advantage. By the way, one of the reasons for these various hand signs is that they believe it invokes or invites satanic deities to come yeah. from another dimension. Yeah. And, and it gives them energy powers. For they worship, indeed, the God of forces, the Bible says. The God of forces. I'm sorry, I'm trying to keep moving. Sure, let's roll. keep moving. Okay. Uh, no, that's great. Yeah, talk all you want. Uh, so these hand signs go back to ancient Egypt. They, they really do. Egypt, Babylon, you're going to see many of the signs and, and many of the... Uh, this is Christopher Columbus. He was a member, of course, of a secret uh, Illuminati order. Uh, and uh, you notice the Knights Templar crosses in many of the paintings of the three ships uh, yeah. that he brought over. But uh, was his name really Christopher Columbus? No, it was not. Yeah. Uh, and so there's a lot of uh, secret history uh, involved in all of these hand signs. And such My personal Freeman. belief is that they've taken on the name Columbia. You know, that's our goddess. Ah. This is the male representation of wow. Columbia. You know, this is the first time I've ever heard that uh, is said in public, but I believe it is true. District of Columbia, as you mentioned, the nation of Columbia. Mm -hmm. and, and we have a... Uh, if anybody would like to see her picture, maybe. I don't think it's a good representation. But we have Columbia Movie Studios. Yes, yeah. You know, the gal with the Roman toga, and she mm -hmm. has a torch, you know, that she's holding up and such. Ah. Well, I set you up here a little clip here. Uh, <laughs> okay. Because, you know, the hook'em horn sign. Now, this one, you know, people say, I love you, or, uh, you know, they say it means so many yeah. things. But... It has always been something that rock and rollers use, and, and always been in connection with Satan. It has. Uh, at, at first, you when when you had the really deep. Um, uh, back back in the 80s and early 90s especially the and 70s the the heavy metal satanic rock people mm -hmm. you know uh, that's when it really began and Ozzy Osbourne I remember one of the uh, concerts I never went to him but uh, I read that he actually had an altar call for the devil yeah. and said come forward and worship the devil and give your life to the devil and uh, all the kids would be doing this kind of sign now I, I again I, I, I look at an ignorance factor here right uh, and I give people, you know, I'm not saying that everybody that does that sign is a Satanist. And, of course, what we just saw was the University of Texas sign and uh, the Longhorn sign. And I'm not at all impugning the integrity of uh, Texas Longhorn fans. I'm one myself. 
But uh, again, here again, we have a sign that can be used for good, just to indicate the Texas Longhorn football team, or for evil. Well, open witchcraft. I mean, we, we practice witchcraft openly these days. Roll this clip here, Shag. Uh, uh, we have Matthew McConaughey, yeah. uh, who, uh, yeah. yeah. For a &M. I need some thought here. So you got to put a lot of thought into this hex because it, it's really powerful that we wouldn't be up here doing this with these red candles, right? We don't even like red. The tradition of the hex, lighting a red candle, goes back to the 1940s. The truth is... a &M was killing UT for a number of years in a row, and a couple of students decided to go to a palm reader. So they hired a local witch to put a hex on. She said light red candles and keep them burning. And we broke their curse um, in their undefeated season, 21 to nothing. Ever since then, uh, Texas kicked the crap out of it. And on this 64th anniversary of Madam Hipple's spell, these hexers mean business. Now here, here what we've seen then, Freeman, and you have captured it on film, it is indeed an occult ceremony. Now they may say it's all for good and fun, and that's what the Shriners, uh, who make an oath to Muhammad and Allah, they may say, oh, we don't really mean it, it's all good fun and everything, but I wonder what God looks upon, lighting red candles and doing hexes, saying we want to kill our opponent. Yes. Uh, and then even the Longhorn sign, maybe when you combine all those things together, uh, I wouldn't think that would be in invoking uh, good forces, let's just put it that way. Uh, you know, I was not raised with a religion at all, but I have conclusively proven to myself that Satan rules this planet. Mm -hmm. So many things. I've done the corporate logos. I've looked into Columbia and her connections to Lucifer. Uh, all of these things show me constantly that our leaders are Satanists. Now, what you've said is a cardinal principle. The Bible itself says Satan is God, with a small g now, of this world. Right. Temporarily, for whatever reason, God is allowing him uh, uh, to reign. The uh, book of Revelation says he's furious because he knows he has but a short time. But you are right, and the signs are everywhere, but people don't know it. That's interesting because you say you're not a Christian, and yet you're more aware than 99.999 go out to the uh, infinity of the Christians that I talk to. I don't know of any pastor that knows what you know about these things. They, uh, that our culture is permeated with satanic symbols, signs, images, and doctrines. And yet the average pastor out there is, is saying, give us money and you'll get rich and uh, you know, just into the most, in a way, they're in a form of black magic themselves. Yeah. Yes. the average pastor, or think positive, make positive confessions. None of these things having anything to do with true Christianity, but a lot to do with uh, New Age occultism. Yes. So we're finding that. And of course, uh, I'm a Christian myself. There is a true Christianity uh, amidst all of the dense forest of false uh, gods uh, and worship. By the way, we're seeing a lot of symbols here. This is the Eastern uh, Star. Yeah, it's not just the men, it's the women. Yeah, there's a women's group and you see the satanic pentagram. The two uh, points uh, indicate the, the horn, uh, horns of the devil. Uh, pointing upward there uh, anytime. You see a pentagon in uh, in the middle. Uh, uh, that again is a um, an occultic symbol and it makes you think about the great war god Mars. It's one of the symbols of the war god Mars. And what is the pentagon at Washington, D.C.? Uh, in the shape of, well, of course, a pentagon and the god of Mars, or the god of war, which is Mars. By the way, uh, Laura Bush is not a UT graduate, but I just saw her there giving the... Uh, the kids, too. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the kids, too. Yeah. One of the daughters, of course, is a UT graduate, but the mother, well, no. And uh, I've even seen the senior, Barbara Bush, uh -huh. you know, the eminence yes. uh, lady, uh, I've seen her giving that sign as, as well. Britney Spears giving the sign. Yeah, now we'll some, come back to her. Okay, we'll come back to that. And notice that, that her, in, in this case, it's the satanic sign, but there's the the, the um, thumb sticking out yes, too. That's, that's and uh, many people say, oh, that's not the sign of Satan then. That's the deaf 
signing of I love you, but uh, actually well, that's not Helen always Keller true. In a cult also. Helen Keller was one of the ones who helped to formulate and bring uh, the, the American Society for the Deaf signs to the fore. But she was also an occultist. She was a theosophist, uh -huh. a Swedenborgian, and uh, I believe that's the reason why that's signed. Does it mean I love you or does it mean I love you devil? Yeah. That's the question. <laughs> that is the question. Now these people, they, they act as if they're here to help us and, and they put oh, themselves yes. into placements to where they can pretend to help us. Yeah, oh well, uh, yeah, here's the Keeping the Faith, that's an interesting, there's a communist uh, fist. Uh, keeping the faith and what? Communism, evidently, right. according to this black power salute type of uh, a fist there, it seems. Well, they give us their hand signs, you know. Mm -hmm. We're going to get into the peace sign in a minute. And they give it to us, and everybody thinks that, you know, it, they came up with it. All of a sudden, it's their sign of solidarity. Yes, but now, yes. look at these few pictures here. Uh, when, when they yeah, here we have John Kerry. He's, of course, giving the communist fist. Yes. And, and that's what that is. It is the communist fist of solidarity. And there's a uh, uh, good old Arnie. Now uh, this one. Bring this picture forward. This one, it, it's not fully ex, uh, extended on either side. So it could just be. Uh, All right, bring that forward. A, a vigorous, energetic uh, no, gesture of some punch kind. That guy in the face. Oh, <laughs> is that right? <laughs> I hadn't seen this picture before, Freeman. Now this is. Uh, I mean, the president's going a little crazy. He, these he, days. I've been hearing a lot of stories. There are rumors uh, that uh, actually pretty well substantiated that he. Uh, maybe on drugs again. I I don't know. You know, there was a time that he had bruises all over his face, and they said he fell off a couch while he was yeah. sleeping. I I've never had my face all bruised up falling off the couch. Um, I got a picture of that too. Uh, you got a yeah. picture of that too. Okay, <laughs> <No>. all right. <laughs> but uh, there may be yeah. something to that. Now, see, he doesn't quite have the fist right there, but I kind of figured that uh, Colin's not entirely black. Uh, yeah, well, I see what you mean. Well, he is, a, he is, he is definitely a 33rd degree Mason, there's no doubt. Uh, and he's been at the Bohemian Grove in California out there. A yeah. little tete-a-tete little, uh, -tete -tete that's held annually. Keep rolling there, sir. I just wanted to yeah, show you. Uh, he's not quite all uh, brother. You know. Here's an interesting Masonic sign. Several of the orders have this. It's an indication. It's pointing to the head, meaning the intellect that they use reason, they use the intellect. Uh, here's a, uh, this must be Malcolm X, if I can remember right. Mm -hmm. And there he's, Sign. yeah, he has on a Masonic ring, by the way. You can see, I believe, uh, from here it's hard to see, but I believe in that picture there is a square and compass of the Masons. So he was not only a black Muslim, yeah, there it is, but he was a, a Mason. Uh, and uh, there's the Prince Hall Masons, made up in, almost entirely of black people, black men, that is. Right. Uh, and here he's pointing to his head. Head, and he's basically asserting that he is uh, more intelligent and more all-knowing than th the masses. And I would think that black people would be insulted. By the way, the X, of course, some people think it's from the Islamic faith or whatever. But, of course, X was one of the signs of Osiris, the Egyptian sun god. And uh, the Islamic faith has many, many old vestiges of the, the old religions. Osiris, there we have the X again and various other symbols. Yeah, it has the. Uh, uh, it was in the the placement of the hands. The placement of the hands in the the cross. By the way, uh, in some uh, Masonic orders, uh, they have uh, Masonic funerals, and they they do the uh, the legs or the hands. Right, that wasn't of the to body. Oh, really? Yeah. And and then the, right before the the casket is covered, they cross the hands, just as they did in the ancient death burial rites uh, of the Egyptian mummies and so forth. So here again they hearken all the way back to the ancient mystery religions. And yet many of these people have the gall to call themselves Christians. Now there's Stephen King doing the X. And, uh, that last mummy actually was uh, Ramses, who was Ramses. Is, is one of George Bush's uh, descendants. Oh, <laughs> it could be. According to David Icke. Uh, oh, really? So David Icke. I, 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 didn't, I didn't know about That's that. That's one of George Bush's relatives right there. Well, uh, yeah. According to David Icke. Yeah. Uh, I thought you meant that the, the brain power was exactly the same. <laughs> uh, at this <laughs> moment in time, I didn't know what you were referring to. But uh, we, we saw Stephen King there. Of course, he's the Thanks. king of the horror genre, you know, fiction. But but isn't it interesting? This was uh, from either Time or Newsweek magazine, one of them. But but 
here's an enigmatic sign he's giving, a mysterious sign. There was no caption that explained it. This is, I mean, people don't just, you don't take a picture of them and they don't just cross their hands like this. This is very obviously a sign of the dead yes. going all the way back to Egypt. <clears throat> and I think he identifies with the dead. Yes. And, and maybe he's been given special powers by forces uh, from beyond, uh, in other words, demonic, uh, to write his books and become famous and rich. It seems that, the, you know, I, I was watching <coughs> Ocean's 12 the other day, and, and the guy in the movie is like, oh, it's like this capitalism stuff doesn't even work. Oh, yeah, they're sort of letting you know they're practicing Jewish Kabbalism. Uh, Jewish Kabbalism is a system of sorcery and medieval witchcraft that is uh, that Albert Pike in his Morals and Dogma, you know, his former sovereign grand commander, uh, actually admitted was the very basis, the core yes. of the Masonic uh, rituals. And then he called for the Holy Masonic Empire. Yeah, yeah. That is the royal secret, he said, that we're going to set up an empire on earth. Now we have the X-Files, but right before that, you had Dick Cheney. Dick Cheney was giving a speech, wasn't he? Yeah, and there was a, a, an anomalous X that kept showing up over him. Yeah, on CNN, and here he's giving a speech talking about trying to, to justify the Iraq war. This was just a week or two ago, uh -huh. and this X shows up. Well, does it mean he's going to be... X out. Okay. That would mean you know you're going to be killed. Well, I, I hope that wasn't true. I hope nobody is in plan is planning such such a dastardly thing. I would you and I would be opposed to that. Absolutely. Even though he's uh, not a very nice man. Uh, but it's interesting that somebody maybe knowingly put that X there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe they were identifying him. And by the way, he absolutely his his own office uh, admits that he is a thirty third degree Freemason. But they know, you know. Yeah. They know, yeah. They know. Like, go to the next shot here. That is Scully, uh, Dana Scully's tattoo off the. Oh, X really? Files. That, was, that was the last image ah. they showed in the last episode before they were off the air. Was wow. Scully's tattoo. Here what? The next here shot. what we have is the serpent swallowing his tail. This is the this is the royal secret now. Now this was an old another TV series called Millennium. That was very popular right before the Millennium. Uh, the year 2000. Uh, and that serpent biting its own tail is also found in the 33rd degree emblem of Freemasonry. It's found in Theosophy, which is an occult uh, a system and group. But uh, that serpent is very, very important. Here we have uh, 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 Lenin, uh, and some artists uh, in Russia portrayed him as, uh, you know, a saint. St. George fighting with the riding of the white horse fighting uh, the, the, the serpent. But in fact, he was in bed with the serpent, wasn't he? Absolutely. And uh, Lenin was just a monster. And uh, tens of millions of people were purged, sent to the Soviet gulags because of the horror, the red terror uh, by Lenin, who again was a mason, a bisexual, and, and much worse. Yeah, the more you look into each of these people, go ahead and uh, you find evil. I mean, uh, yeah, you, know. you do, <laughs> you, you do. Now this, I don't, this is not a person. And interesting, this is a corporate logo. This is Lucent Technologies. But notice the striking similarity with the Ouroboros serpent biting its own tail, which is the supreme symbol of Satanism. Uh, is Lucent technology? Some person wrote to me and said they wondered if Lucent means Lucifer's enterprise. Yeah. Now, I, I, I have no evidence of that. I'm not trying, okay. if anybody works for Lucent technology, I'm not trying to say, I'm just saying what somebody wrote to me and, and well, asked that question. They worship Lucifer. I mean, it's in their work. Yeah, they do. I, I will say this. If an advertising agency that came up with that symbol for Lucent, uh, they did not do them justice, uh, or maybe they did, because it does harken back. Here again, we have the the serpent. Notice the, the, the crown on the top, the phoenix crown. Mm -hmm. uh, the boast, you see, is that Satan was destroyed. He was the beast that was wounded, but shall come back to life his system. And so he swallows himself, meaning every so many uh, eons or ages uh, the world is destroyed and starts all over again. And literally the occult Illuminati today, Freeman, their goal, and this is the most secret of all secrets, is to destroy the whole world 
and then on the ashes a new world order will be built. They don't wish to capture. People say, well surely they wouldn't destroy economies. Surely they wouldn't topple cities with nuclear bombs because they're destroying their own property. You have to understand, they believe they're God men who will survive. Right. And they will go on and a new world shall be formed. Uh, back in the French Revolution, the Illuminists there had planned to kill most of the people of France. It wasn't just Marie Antoinette and King Louis that went to the guillotine, but the, but the ordinary people began uh, to be taken to the guillotine and murdered and massacred. And th these people literally are brutal mass killers. That's why Pol Pot killed so many of his own people in Cambodia. Lenin and Stalin and Trotsky in Russia and then Hitler in Germany. Whether it's the, the Nazi fascist on one side or the communist socialist uh, to the left, they're all monsters. Yeah. And, and uh, we fight in, the, in America between left and right and Republican and Democrat. These people control both factions with their Hegelian dialectic. Uh, and, and, and that is the, 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 the true meaning. There is no difference between them. And we, once we understand that, that we're up against a juggernaut of evil that does not have a label, then we can be true Americans. We can come together, right. whatever our so-called political stripes. It doesn't matter if you're Bill Clinton on the left or George W. Bush on the right. These are evil men. Yes. So it doesn't, we're not politically uh, in, in political partnership. Bush, you know. Put, Putin and Bush. And here's Nixon, by the way. I would like to throw uh, um, in real fast that uh, if you look around, all the Mason temples in America are up for sale. They're, they're there has sold off. At there has been a decline. Well, I don't think it's due to a decline. I think they're ready to lay this country flat and they're liquidating their assets. Well, I see what you mean. Right. Uh, that may well be, uh, certainly... Uh, at one time they had six million, today there's around two and a half million Masons. That's still a significant number, especially when you realize that the key politicians, the key financiers are still Masons today. So you may be absolutely right. We're never going to make it to the end of this. Uh so we might have to. Sk we're, we're on we may have to do another program sometime. I think we're going to need another program. Yeah. Uh, that, by the way, uh, in Druid witchcraft, they use this same sign. Th these are not people just giving a little victory sign. Uh, that uh, that sign that was used, made famous by Winston Churchill, is the satanic horn devil sign. If you go back and study it, not that everybody using it means that, but certainly that's the origins of it. Well, this is a Scientology, L. Ron Hubbard, who certainly knew many of these signs, let's just say. Yes. <laughs> as a Mason and a member of the OTO, an occult society. In the Scientology, you pointed out the 666 and that with the serpent. Uh, L. Ron Hubbard wanted to be the beast. When, when Crowley died, he wanted to take the place. Now I, uh, I, I had read that. You know, his own son wrote a book. Uh, exposing him. That tells you something when your own son uh, uh, does, a, does a book. Uh, this is a guy named Jack Parsons here, I can tell from that picture, mm -hmm. uh, under an arch. And the arch has always been an important symbol uh, among the, uh, the Masonic and other secret societies. Jack Parsons was the guy who uh, invented, he was a brilliant scientist, uh, and the NASA sp uh, space program recognizes him as one of the greatest rocket scientists ever. He invented the solid fuel for the rocket program. We wouldn't have the space program had it not been for him. He was also a satanic high priest right. who conducted sexual rituals. And uh, here's a drawing of him with, uh, with his girlfriend. And they conducted uh, rituals called Babylon working. Right. And they believe that through sexual rituals, this rocket scientist, uh, Jack Parsons out in California, believed that they could have a child who would be the Antichrist. Right. And that would be their honor, they believed, to, uh, to bring forth into the world the Antichrist as their child. This is the demented uh, way uh, of these men. By the way, he was a, a big friend of L. Ron Hubbard. They were in the same cult yeah. before Scientology uh, was formed. I'm not saying Scientology is Crowleyan or uh, uh, Parsons or anything. I'm just saying that L. Ron Hubbard, his origins were there. L. Ron so, Hubbard Jr. said that it was uh, black magic spread out over a long period of time. Mm. 
Mm. It's not a you know one particular ritual to really get you. It's a long ritual. A long, a long. I, I think that all of these hand signs and everything collectively, cumulatively, are poisoning America. Michael Jackson, you always see him giving that sign. He knows what it is. He studied under a Jewish rabbi, studied the Jewish Kabbalah yes. system of magic, uh, and I think he is. He must be a very deep occultist. We're almost to uh, yeah, the rappers. Know. The rappers like to give that. And there's a lot of different. There's Ozzy Osbourne giving. You, you can see right away that sign. He knows it's a sign of Satan. Ah, now we have been uh, the, the the Mr. Spock. Uh, you know, everybody thought he just made that up. Right. But actually, that is the uh, one of the letters of the alpha, Jewish alphabet. Mm -hmm. So this is Jewish Kabbalah. This is magic. When he did this on Star Trek, he literally was causing every person who was viewing was viewing that program to become part participant in a Jewish Kabbalistic ritual. That's called the letter Shin in the Jewish al alphabet. So that okay. wasn't something that the creators of Star Trek made up. Uh, that actually was an occult symbol that Leonard uh, Nimoy came up with there well, Star Trek from his Jewish like background. Star Trek is like Freemason dream, you know, military spacefaring race. I mean, that's their dream. I really start to believe that these guys are aliens. Yeah, the movie V, you know, we're back to the V. Uh, yeah, the reptilian. Uh, well, well, certainly they have a spirit that is reptilian in nature. I can tell you that. Yeah. Whether David Icke is correct or not about the mask uh, coming off, uh, but but you do wonder if if uh, Satan doesn't have the ability to be a, a shape shifter. Yeah. And again, I'm not I'm not saying that's true or anything no, else. No, but but you know, it, it's interesting that in Reve in uh, the book of Genesis, it talks about something sort of similar to that. Uh, the the how these aliens come forth and take as their wives right. the beautiful daughters of men and create a horrible new race yeah. on earth so horrible that God destroyed the race with the flood exactly. of Noah so that has some biblical significance this is the raw alien they're a UFO cult and it's interesting that although they seem to desecrate the star of David the Jewish star of David mm -hmm. they've been invited over to Israel, and that with great ceremony, they're given land and everything by the Jewish government. There isn't that was the head, by the way, uh, of the raw alien cult. Isn't that sort of interesting that they seem to welcome? And and, and in the middle of their symbol is the Nazi swastika. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but the but the Israeli government finds nothing wrong with that. I think something is strange. Oh, we jumped ahead here. Um, here we have more Masons with their, yeah, this is their the, funny little this caps. Is, uh, you know, I was really surprised when you brought up Michael Richards as a Freemason. Michael Richards of uh, the Seinfeld show. Jerry uh, Seinfeld, of course, is also into Kabbalism. Yes. And there he's given a Kabbalistic sign, by the way. I've got a few you can tell that. here. In the Das Seinfeld archives. <laughs> the Das Seinfeld archives. Let me see if okay. I can pick these out. Well, no, we got that one. Ah, uh, yes. And that's the same one you got Rasputin here doing in your book. Here's here's Nixon giving a penal sign of Freemasonry. There's yeah, these are all the right angle. And it's Ozzy given the right. There's angle. Ozzy given yeah. He's he's on the square, as the Masons right. would say there. Right. <laughs> and now so this one, and then that one. I noticed uh, when I was going through these. Now you see Kramer is giving that one, and Jerry's giving the other one. There you go. And there you go. Elaine and and George are doing the the hermaphrodite. Yes, they are, and that's interesting. All of them are giving a cultic. Uh, Secret Society signs on Seinfeld. Seinfeld was a show uh, that if you dissected would find incredible occultism uh, in symbology, wouldn't you? Yeah. Here's Philip 66. Well, see, now I found uh, out a lot of these corporate logos are interesting. Uh, what I've discovered in realizing that they were practicing a Hebrew mysticism uh, is that the hold that there, Chuck. Uh, the letter V in Hebrew is six. Right? Oh, oh yes, and the vowel. Yeah, that's and correct. Instead of yeah. Uh, so when you look at at uh, VW there, ah, you actually see two. Very V's, interesting. Right, W. And then, oh. I found the number sixty-six is the number of the fallen angels. Wow. And so W actually means the fallen angels in magic. In VW, he crossed the two V's, making six 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 because he knew and incredible. It, you know, they realized that. Hitler is practicing Hebrew magic. Okay, you know, yeah, that one's yeah, for a little yeah, while. and it all goes back to these fallen angels. It does. It does indeed. The fallen angels that have taught these men these uh, these horrible things. Samael is a name for the devil. Lilith, by the way, is the consort. 
yeah. of the devil. This is the mistress of the devil. There we have Baphomet, the horn god. Well, he's saying that's, that's for the sign for W, but yeah. is it? Uh -huh. I would think it's the unholy trinity. Here's uh, simply the sign of the devil by Prince William. And and this, oh and my. Self made into an angel. I, I understand down in South America, a certain town down there dedicated that statue of the dark angel to Prince Charles. Yeah. Yeah. And he was proud of it. Proud to be associated with the devil. That there's the the angel. They, they a black, dark angel. That's Prince Charles. Have, yeah. <laughs> it's in a it's in the square of a town, isn't it down in South America somewhere? Yeah, yeah. Uh, to Prince Charles. Yes. It's yes. it's astonishing. Because it's all it all goes back to magic. Right? It is it is magic, it's rituals. And here again we this is the sign of admiration or astonishment. Or surprise. And surprised he called up that little demon. Uh, yeah, yeah. In this case, <laughs> there's Aleister Crowley. You can see all the various symbols. That's in his Masonic symbols. regalia, and he is. Go back to that check, even though we only got a few minutes left. Um, he's in his Masonic regalia there, and it's signed, of course, his his name, the Baphomet. Yeah. And so I thought maybe we could talk a little bit. About oh, that's the interesting. He signs as Baphomet. Yeah. Uh, and there uh, is, is a symbol of Baphomet as well. Yeah. Like this is the man he called, he prided himself, he, he called himself the wickedest man on the planet. Right. And now, uh, um, his, his handwritten works are at the UT campus at the, the uh, Harry Ransom Center. The Book of the Law, the most sinister uh, book he's ever written. It was right there. It's right here. Well, they paid millions of dollars to get all these wonderful works, haven't they? Yeah. Um, uh, uh, astonishing. Marilyn Manson, of course. Uh, oh, here's uh, George I'm showing uh, all the different uh, Washington. Yeah. Of this is one of the statues of George Washington that was first uh, erected in Washington, D.C., making, making him into a Roman god. Uh, but there was a little embarrassment over it because of his nakedness and because of the Roman god or Roman emperor image. Uh, and that sits somewhere in some back closet of a museum. Well, he's in the same position as, as the Baphomet. Yeah, it's the same, it's this very same position as the Baphomet. Here we have the, uh, again, that the serpent. And you have the, 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 the image. Notice, as above, so below. Yes. That's the meaning of that Jewish story of David, two triangles together. And he's Let's just the, it there. Yeah, so here again we get back to some of the more deep occult symbols of uh, of Satan. And that's all the pictures we're going to get. All right. So we we got to a lot today. Yeah. <laughs> we sure did. Uh, but we got time to talk about this some more. We can let it roll, I guess. Um, because now... We're finding that this all goes back to a Hebrew Kabbalism, and everybody is openly practicing this. Demi Moore just had a Kabbalist. That's wedding. true. Uh, Madonna, Brittany, uh, they're all practicing. I saw Bill Clinton had his little red Did he? wristband. Oh, yeah, he's into the Kabbalah, too. Yeah, uh, Newt Gingrich is into the Kabbalah. Yeah, they're all practicing black magic of Kabbalah. Uh, where do we where do we go from here? <laughs> What's the well? Uh, let's go ahead and stop it. There. Isn't it always true that there is the, the majority that's sort of just unknowing, and then there is a significant minority who is evil uh, that is versed in the deep things of Satan, and then you have a few good Christian people and, and people of good will that I hope will become Christian myself as a Christian because we need some fighters. We need some warriors. And I'm not talking, you can go in, in almost every church in Austin, Texas. You're not going to find true Christians. You just find pew sitters, people that just sit there. They're not willing to fight evil. Most people are frightened to death. I give you credit, Freeman. I, I Sometimes I wonder if I'm just stupid. No, you're not. You're, <laughs> no, you're not. I can tell you're not. But you, you have courage. You have boldness. And I, th I think that, that matters a lot. And you're doing the people of America a great service. What else? We, des we deserve more than this horror that we're seeing, this magical ritual. Uh, and, and you know the media, and ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, the networks, uh, and Time Magazine, Washington Post, all of the various news agencies, they're involved in this. They know what they're uh, what they're showing us. They know they're participating yes. in this march of evil images uh, and, and symbology and so forth. They are part of the evil force. But I want to assure people, though, this is the, these people are not going to win ultimately. They have great power. They can do great damage. But I don't believe ultimately uh, they're going to win. I believe truth 
has has its own reward and it has its own great power. Uh, and I, I believe uh, I don't mean to preach to people. I'm not here to do that tonight necessarily, but. Um, I, I believe that the resurrection power of Christ Jesus demonstrated the power. Uh, the devils of hell couldn't keep him down. He triumphed over them. Jesus told me I could walk on water. You know? uh, yeah, well, he could. He can walk on water, and 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 I. So, I, I think these people, in a way, are pitiful. They're they're much miserable. You know. As a Christian, I don't need formulas. I don't need numerology. Right. I don't need all these symbols and all this garbage. They go through a lot of effort. Yeah, well, they do. Uh, and, and a lot of them, believe me, are frightened. What if they make the wrong hand sign? <laughs> what, if, what if the ritual backfires? You'll read in their own literature, they're saying if you don't do the ritual right, these evil spirits can come forth. I've read that in Freemason works. Yeah. yeah. So uh, a lot of these people get trapped into this. And they literally are, are, are desperate. Uh, and, and some of them end up uh, uh, killing themselves. Uh, Jack Parsons, we, we mentioned him, the, uh, the, the great rocket scientist. He, he died in an explosion, but many people say he uh, killed himself. Right. They exploded his own works, uh, you know, exploded uh, in his home. Uh, Deep within our souls, we know. And they know. Yeah, they, they, yeah, they know. They know whom they worship. They, they will have a thousand disguises. It's like a witch uh, that I debated up in the Seattle on, on TV uh, station there. She said, oh, you horrible Christians. We witches do not worship the devil. That's, the devil is a Christian invention. And I ask her, and you know, they, you know, sort of like the old Phil Donahue show, the, the host comes up and sticks a uh, uh, microphone in my face. Well, what do you, what do you have, what's your response to that, Mr. Mars? And I asked this witch, I said, you don't worship the devil. She said, absolutely not. I said, but you as a witch do worship Pan, the horned god of the forest. Well, yes, she said, but that's not the devil. Right. Well, you know, the horned god is the horned god. I don't worship a horned god, do you? No, I Freeman? don't. So, so, you know, here again, they attempt to disguise it. In one of the Masonic books I was reading by uh, 33rd Degree Mason, John Robinson, A Pilgrim's a Path, that was published uh, by a Masonic uh, uh, publishing house, he says, well, we don't worship Lucifer. We don't even believe in Lucifer. Yeah. Lucifer is not the devil. Lucifer is a good angel. Right. He was the solar angel. The sun angel. And you Christians have it all mixed up. Lucifer is not the devil. Right. So they're setting up people so that uh, w when people do find out who they're really worshiping, they say, but that's not that's the devil. Not the devil. Lucifer right. isn't the devil. He's a good angel. I sent a friend of mine one of my videos. And I've got a three-hour video now. And, oh, you saw it. Uh, and uh, he went and joined the Masons the next month. Well, maybe he wanted to uh, to get a bit of that magic. Maybe he wanted to partake of that supernaturalism. But I want to warn people, you, you know... You don't I, get something for nothing. I can't huh? tell you how many people have committed suicide after dabbling with these things. I'm not trying to scare yeah. people. If you want names, uh, by the way, read my book, Ravaged by the New Age. You'll have names of a number of Satanists and others who, who kill themselves and actually killed others too. There, there, there are people killing others in Satanic rituals well, even they, to this day they in America. As if, you know, they join the secret society, they get all the perks of the system, they get to be president, head of the banks, and all of this, and they believe that it's only due to the fact that they've stepped up to this altar, kneeled down and worshipped Jabalon. Mm -hmm. And they think there's no payment for this. That, oh, well, uh, you know, if I just get up here and swear to cut my throat open and rip my tongue out, then I'm all good. I get a good job. I get, you know, there's no free lunch. You know, there's a... The, 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 the devil requires things of you. Yes. Uh, I remember there was a witch who was the high... Uh, was the really sort of like the highest, highest level witch in the state of Florida. She wrote a book called The Witch That Switched. Yeah. She switched to Christianity. She said as a witch, she never was satisfied. The devil never had enough and kept requiring her more and more of her. And, and so she was, she was a miserable person. And I believe these people will end up that way too. My if all they want is a, is a temporary gain. Right. 
Yes, it's not all about the third dimensional reality. That's right. And these people are dealing, right. it, selling you the third dimensional, the American dream, but it's all Satan representing this order. I've that's that's right. It, I've seen it in my father. I've seen it, you know, countless times. And thank you, Tex. Hey, thank you, Freeman. It right. has been great being here tonight. It's been wonderful. And it's great to expose evil. It is. And okay. I and I appreciate your courage on this program very much. And what else can we do, right? You know, we can't just sit back and let this happen. No, no, we can't. And uh, we, we've got to fight. We are fighting. Yes. And uh, it's amazing. Many people say, why aren't you dead, Tex Mars? Well, I'm going to be right here till God calls me home. Uh, and it's not going to be because of, of these people. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that was hey, that I was think great. we did pretty good. That was great. Yeah. yeah. That went fast. It man. does, doesn't it? Man. I was like, oh, man, we're never going to get We didn't even get through half the pictures. <laughs> wow. We'll have to do it again. Well, you, we will have to do it again. You just did a marvelous job. I can't...